The question of who's responsible uh, for ensuring the safety of devices is a very good one. It left me with a lot of pain. I had um, migraines every day for over two and a half years. How can a product that was approved for sale in Canada, if it had been tested, how can it be breaking apart in my body? Well, those are just some of the questions and issues raised by our week-long series, The Implant Files. We're looking into medical devices, the kind that are implanted in many Canadians. CBC News is working with Radio Canada and the Toronto Star on this investigation in collaboration with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. Our focus today is on insulin pumps, a device used by millions of people around the world to manage type 1 diabetes. They are more popular than ever here in Canada now that provincial health plans pay for them. But we've learned that over the past decade, more than 100 Canadians have died while wearing those pumps. Vicodopia has more. Type 1 diabetes is a complex disease to manage. It requires constant blood sugar monitoring and multiple daily injections. So when insulin pumps like these appeared on the market, they were a life changer. Instead of those daily injections, users program a steady flow of insulin. But if there's a mistake programming these or the device fails somehow, it can have devastating consequences. In the U.S., there were more than 300,000 incidents last year alone. Now, that adverse event information is not public in Canada, but data we obtained from Health Canada shows that since 2008, there were 103 deaths and more than 1,900 injuries involving insulin pumps. Almost 6,500 incidents had the potential for injury or death, the most incidents for any single device. Now, during that same period, Health Canada issued 40 recalls for various pumps. We spoke to the families of various pump users who died after the pumps delivered too much or too little insulin. They say Health Canada simply doesn't have the technical ability to say for sure if the pump was the problem or user error. And that's because it's often only the manufacturers who have the expertise to analyze these devices. Our governing body of health is not taking a stand on this. And um, the government has pulled money from that and so the people or the the companies are kind of left to do whatever they want to do, and it's it's a little it's it's frightening. That's why there was a call for change by a joint U.S. European working group of diabetes technology experts. They're calling for more transparency from companies about how these devices work, and they want a single international database to record the experiences of users of insulin pumps to monitor trends and prevent problems before they become widespread. Now, Health Canada says it won't fund such a database, but generally supports the idea. However, Health Canada says as a result of recent concerns it has over insulin pumps, companies now have to provide more detailed testing data before new pumps are licensed. Vicodopia, CBC News, Toronto. Well, CBC News did catch up with the federal health minister, Jeanette Petipa-Taylor, yesterday. And we asked her what more Health Canada can do to improve the tracking and reporting of adverse effects related to medical devices. Now, she says the federal government is taking steps to make sure Canadians are safe. August of this year we've launched a review of the regulations when it comes to medical devices and also pharmaceuticals as we certainly want to make sure um, that institutions now report any adverse effects. So we recognize that more can be done and that's why that we started the regular, with the regulatory review uh, in August. And again that was Health Minister Jeanette Petipa-Taylor speaking to CBC News yesterday.